Okay, so you've heard of quiet quitting and you've heard of quiet firing, but how about a quiet cushion? You can even call it a career cushion. Look, it's January. This is the firing and layoff season, but it's also the season when IT, cybersecurity, and software people get wanderlust and want to explore other options. And it's the time of year when you're home from college or you have a couple of days off between work and Christmas and New Year's. So you can make those days productive and generate a cushion, something soft to land on if you want to look for a new job or if you lose your job. So I've identified six skills that you can learn over your work or school vacation to make yourself more employable. Now, as you can see, I'm in a different place in my spare bedroom back in Silver Spring, Maryland. I'm spending some time in Virginia Beach with a friend of mine, and while I'm down here, I want to learn the R programming language for statistical computing. Now, I don't expect you to learn R, but the skills I'm going to list you can reasonably learn in about a week or two. You won't be an expert, but you will know enough to do some basic operations and answer some interview questions. Now, the big deal here is that these skills aren't necessarily taught in college, or even at most employers. Most people learn these skills by themselves. They're self-taught. But when you submit your resume, these skills will help you with the keyword searches that a lot of employers use to filter resumes. Now, I'm mostly a C-sharp and .NET stack kind of guy, but these skills are universal no matter what stack you choose. Now, before I get started, give me 30 seconds to pay the bills here. This video is sponsored by Atlas VPN. Click the link in the description below. You can still have a private Christmas and a safe new year with Atlas VPN Premium. Get it for only $1.70 a month plus six months extra with this limited time offer. I really do use this product. Like I said, I'm at a friend's house for a few days and she has no idea when she last updated her router software. This means she has never updated her router software. So I use Atlas VPN because if you have no idea what kind of network you're accessing, you probably shouldn't be accessing it. Atlas VPN acts as a tunnel between your computer and the public internet that creates a barrier that hackers and rogue government agents can't penetrate. So click the link in the description below. So have a private Christmas and a safe new year with Atlas VPN Premium. Get it for just $1.70 a month plus six months extra in this limited time off. The first skill is SQL or structured query language. Now it doesn't matter what you learn. You can learn Microsoft SQL or Postgres or MySQL in the end. Any language for querying a database is mostly the same across all relational databases. You want to learn the basics of SQL because just about everything a business does these days ends up in a database. So learn how to do basic CRUD operations, create a record, read the record, update the record, delete the record. Also learn how to do a simple SQL join and know what clustered and non-clustered indexes are. You're not gonna become a DBA but learn some basic operations. If you don't want to install SQL in your machine, look at something like SQL Fiddle. That will allow you to experiment with SQL on a website. You can also create a virtual machine that's running Linux and install something like Microsoft SQL as a Docker container, but I'll, I'll get to that. Now, if you only learn one thing, learn the basics of SQL. The second skill is JIRA. JIRA is a project tracking tool and it might actually be able to help you in your school projects or even your work projects because it helps you break down what you need to do. Now, when I'm hiring, I want to know that you can work in teams. Just about everything we do today involves a team. And even if you're solo, JIRA will help you provide project tracking and accountability. JIRA helps teams collaborate and account for their work. Seeing JIRA on your resume indicates to me that you're working in teams while in college, or at least that you're organized and know how to break up work into user story chunks for easy tackling. Now there's plenty of other project tracking utilities out there like TFS, or now they call it uh, Windows uh, Team, Azure DevOps, that, that was it. Or Pivotal Tracker, but most companies seem to like Jira. You can get started with a free Jira account for up to 10 people. So with Jira, learn how to create a sprint, learn how to add tickets, move them across the board until you are done. This will only take a few days to learn, but if I'm a team lead and I see a candidate has JIRA, I'm gonna be interested because I think that candidate might already know how the software lifecycle works and this is one less thing that I need to teach them. The third skill is Git. Git and GitHub are useful because it's probably the most popular kind of source control today. 
you can create a free account and store your college projects there. If you aren't using Git, you're probably versioning your projects by creating different directories and may, or maybe zipping them and sending the zip file up to Google Drive, and that's fine, but it doesn't scale very well. And if you want to use one file from one directory, another file from another directory, and roll back one but not the other, then it's just this mishmash. Look, just use Git. Once you learn it, you're never going to want to stop using it. You can use Git command line or you can use the GUI version. Either one is fine. I use the GUI a lot. Now, if you're a new developer, I don't expect you to learn hard resets and rebasing and merging, but be able to clone a repo, pull it down, do some work, and check it back in. The fourth skill is running some kind of virtual machine architecture. If you're running Windows 10 or Windows 11 Pro, learn how to use Hyper-V. If you don't have the Pro editions of Windows, get something like Oracle VirtualBox which will run on the consumer edition of Windows or Windows 10, Windows 11 Home. Virtual machines are useful for a few reasons. First, if you have to test something in multiple environments, you can do it at your fingertips. You want to make sure something works in Debian or Ubuntu or Windows 10, or Windows 11, you can test it very easily using a virtual machine system. Second, if you have to create some kind of client server application or test how a separate database server might work, you can do that right on your desktop. Third, if you're doing some kind of cybersecurity, you can practice your stigging or practicing your hardening directly on your desktop before you go to work and actually perform that action at work. And fourth, it's very useful for safer browsing. A lot of times when I do intelligence research, especially on Russia or China or Iran, I do it on a virtual machine that's behind a VPN, Atlas VPN. The final skill is Docker. Now, Kind of like Hyper-V, you can't run Docker on Windows 10 Home, but you can run it on Linux or even a Raspberry Pi. So one strategy would be to use VirtualBox to run Linux and then install Docker on the virtual machine. Docker allows you to take your software and package it and all of its dependencies into containers so it runs quickly and reliably from one machine to another. So with Docker, you're not going through crazy installs or setting up software configuration files. You run Docker, and it will run the same no matter the infrastructure. Now, if you're creating client server or web-based applications and services, Docker is great, but it's not so great for desktop applications because Docker really doesn't have the ability to run software with a graphical interface. So if you're mainly working in WinForms development instead of web development, it would be better to learn a utility like SQL. Now, there is one final thing that you should consider, and that is to get your PMP, or Project Management Professional Certification. It only takes 35 hours in class, but that will fit into a work or school vacation. And you may not have any desire to become a project manager, but that first day when you encounter a project manager who really doesn't know what he's talking about and you swear to yourself that you could do a better job, well, armed with that PMP certification, now you can be the guy that does the better job. So that PMP certification is probably one of the most useful tools in your toolbox if you're in your mid-career. Now, remember what I said at the beginning that if you should only learn one thing, learn SQL. If you really want to excel in your career and your mid-career or have a few years under your belt, get that PMP certification instead. Consider the PMP to be a long-term investment. But if you're just starting out, SQL is probably the better bet. So to recap, the six skills are SQL, JIRA, Get virtual machines, Docker, and get your PMP. Now, like I said, if you can only learn one of those things, learn SQL. And thank you so much for watching.